Welcome to Wildflower Weekly with Ashley Adair. I'm Ashley, and I work as an Ag and Natural Resources Educator at Purdue Extension in Montgomery County. McCormick Woods is noticeably shadier this week. Many of the spring ephemerals we've been watching have really started to senesce. We'll provide a few updates for you on that, as well as some new plants. We thank you for joining us again this week and hope you have a happy Memorial Day weekend. That being said, let's go ahead and get this walk started. Let's go. McCormick Woods was especially calm this week. With the extra shade and no breeze, you can really tell that summer is on its way. For those of you joining us for the first time, this video series has mostly been discussing spring ephemeral wildflowers. A spring ephemeral is a woodland plant that completes its above ground life cycle in a short period of time, usually between March and June in Indiana. These plants provide many benefits to woodland animals at this time of year, serving as food and nectar sources for insects and larger animals alike. We are nearing the end of spring we are at the end of spring ephemeral season in Indiana, as evidenced by warmer temperatures and shadier conditions in the woods. Many of our spring ephemeral plants that we've been following this year are starting to senesce. Let's set the scene. We're walking at McCormick Woods, a Purdue managed property near Purdue's campus. This week we walked on Thursday, May 21st. The weather was about 67 degrees Fahrenheit and it was very cloudy and calm this week. This property is open to the public for hiking and mountain biking and is partially managed by a local mountain biking organization. In the image to the left, we have a photo of the south entrance that we've been keeping an eye on through this entire series, but mysteriously the sign went missing this week. You can still see this entrance adjacent to a golf cart path on the Ackerman Allen Golf Course. It's just looking like a typical Indiana spring out there. The good news is that our overnight lows haven't dipped below 50 degrees, so we've still had lots of progress in plant growth over the last week. And it looks like we have some storms on the docket for the holiday weekend. Storms can pose a risk to some of our plants that we've been looking at, especially if we encounter an errant hailstorm. Just as a reminder, I'm hiking in northwest Tippecanoe County. If you're just as few as 15 miles north or south of me, you could be experiencing different conditions and different stages of plant growth and bloom at this time of year. It's also worth noting that not every spring ephemeral species is found in this woodland. Some species that are common or semi-common in other woods, like Bishop's Cap, Virginia Bluebells, and Hepatica, are so far not found in McCormick Woods. If you have a species that you're wondering about, please feel free to reach out to me for identification. Contact information can be found in the description of this video. Here's how it works. Each slide has information organized in a particular way. Here is the photo of the plant. Here is the scientific name. And here is the common name. Below the common name, you'll find some interesting facts about the plant, how it's pollinated, its role in the ecosystem, and more. Or, in this particular case, a photo showing a transition from flowering to setting seed. We've added an update graphic in the bottom of some of the slides to show you what's happening with a flower we saw in weeks past. This week, we have a number of updates to share with you as our spring ephemerals begin to senesce. However, we're starting off with an update on doll's eyes or white baneberry. As you can see here, the flowers have given way to fruits. This plant has started to set seed and by fall, we'll see those creepy little eyes that look like China doll eyes emerging from this seed head. We also have an update on Illinois horse gentian. As a reminder, this is a member of the honeysuckle family, but it's a Midwest native and not a true gentian. This relatively tall plant has leaves that blush red on top. The flowers are hidden in the axils, or where the leaves attach to the stem. The flowers are attractive to, to bumblebees, which have long tongues. Notice how the flower is tubular in shape. The foliage is a larval food source for the snowberry clearwing moth. Other members of the honeysuckle family that are native to the Midwest also provide that larval food source. You can see in the image to the right a close-up of the flowers of this plant. They're surprisingly attractive for as hidden as they are. 
One new plant this week that we'd like to share with you is Sanicula odorata, the black snake root. The name for this plant comes from a colonial notion that the roots could treat snake bites, but this is probably untrue. The flowers of this plant are attractive to bees and flies. The fruit of these plants are covered in soft spines that are kind of like Velcro. They'll cling to your clothing and fur. If you've ever been on a walk in the woods with a dog, your dog has probably come out of the woods with these little seed heads stuck to it. This is another member of the carrot family. It's one of the few plants that deer will choose not to browse on because the foliage has a bitter taste. In this image, you can see the remains of one of the flower heads. We just barely caught this plant at the end of its bloom period. This plant is relatively common, so keep an eye out for it along the trails as you walk. We have an interesting bug alert to share with you this week. Here we have Vesades quadrupedes, the maple bladder gall mite. I challenge you to say that one five times fast. This mite manifests as a skinny bump on maple leaves that start out as green and gradually turn red. The galls contain a small and worm-like mite. This mite can infect red, silver, and sugar maples. However, it's not a serious issue. This mite is primarily a cosmetic problem as it leaves these somewhat unsightly galls on the leaves. Galls in general are typically a response to irritation, and in this case, they form due to irritation from the feeding mite. Here's a close-up image of what those galls look like. These galls will gradually turn brighter red over time. At any one moment, you might see different galls in different color stages on a leaf on a maple tree. Some more updates this week. Hydrophyllum virginianum, or Virginia water leaf, has begun blooming throughout McCormick Woods. We first saw this plant and another species of water leaf in week three with its water stained leaves. Virginia water leaf is one of three types of hydrophyllum that can be found in Indiana forests. They can be differentiated by their flowers and their leaf shapes. Great water leaf and Virginia water leaf, shown here, are the dominant flowers in this woods right now. Remember when we first had spring beauty as the dominating flower, then we moved on to trout lily, and then finally wild geranium. Now that dominant flower is definitely water leaf. An update on Euonymus obovatus, the running strawberry bush. As a reminder, this low growing shrub is sometimes confused with other native vines as well as non-native invasive species like winter creeper, which is a close cousin of this plant. The flowers are blooming in McCormick Woods this week, and you can see the bright yellow stamens arranged in a pentagon pattern standing out in contrast to the drab, greenish petals. You can also see a very tiny fly that happens to be visiting the flower. Take a closer look. This is a, an exceedingly small fly, so it's not easy to see, but this fly is probably in the Drosophila genus. Our next update is on Phlox divericata, the wild blue phlox. The bloom for this plant is primarily finished for the season. However, a few plants are still holding on to some of their flowers. The plant has started to form seed capsules that each contain several small seeds. Let's take a closer look. You can see the seed capsule here surrounded by plant tissue that has small glandular hairs that we call trichomes. Another update on the upright carrion flower. This plant is a dioecious plant, meaning that some plants will produce male flowers and others will produce female flowers. We started seeing some of the flowers on this plant this week, so we'll check out and see if we can sex the plant. The flowers on this plant are smelly, like carrion, where it gets its name. So it attracts flies, but it also attracts bees. Here's a closer look at that flower cluster. These flowers appear to be female, featuring a rotund green ovary and a three-parted style emerging from the top of the ovary. The style is the part of this plant that will receive the pollen from the male flowers. Moving on to a May apple update. Some of the plants have just begun setting fruit. On the left, you can see the fruit emerging as the white petals begin to fall off. 
Now the real question is, will we see any box turtles anytime soon? Remember, it takes at minimum four to five years for a mayapple to bloom, and sometimes it can take as long as 12 years. So getting to see fruit on these plants is a real treat. However, the fruit is toxic when unripe, so don't try to eat these yourself. Leave them for the turtles. One of my favorite updates this week comes from the wild geranium. Some of the plants have begun setting seed, and when these seed pods mature, they will fire the seeds into the distance when disturbed. There are many plants in the world that disperse their seeds by explosion. Touch-me-nots are a familiar example. I encourage you to look up some YouTube videos of these various plants that disperse their seeds via explosion. We'll come back to this geranium later in the season once the seed pod matures, and we'll see if we can capture some video of this plant flinging its seed into the distance. We also have a wildlife alert this week. We've seen tracks from a couple of other species like white-tailed deer, but our newest update on wildlife is from Procyon loader, the raccoon. Raccoons are primarily nocturnal and they're very omnivorous. Their diets are very diverse, as you may have noticed if you have raccoons that wander around your neighborhood or near your home. Raccoons have extremely sensitive paws with five fingers, which you can see in the track left here. Touch is the most important sense for this animal by far. Raccoons are probably colorblind and can't distinguish between colors very well, but what they can't see with their eyes, they can feel with their paws, and in some cases smell with their nose. Their paws become even more touch sensitive when they submerge them in water. Oftentimes you can find raccoons foraging in the wild for food along streams and shorelines. The ideal habitat for a raccoon is a wooded area with plenty of cover and access to trees which are easy to climb. A word about senescence. So many of our spring ephemerals have entered their last stage of life, and this is a time period that we call senescence in the botanical world. This means that plants will start to yellow and die back for the season. On the left, we have false mermaid weed, the annual plant in the meadow foam family that prefers wet areas that has started to senesce after producing seed. On the right, we have the prairie trillium, a perennial and one of the most persistent spring ephemerals from March through June, which has begun to yellow. These species will soon complete their life cycles. False mermaid weed will emerge from seed next year, and trillium, along with many of its other perennial friends, will emerge from underground structures that have overwintered. It wouldn't be a Wildflower Weekly without a brief invasive species update, so let's check out what's going on with bush honeysuckle. These shrubs that we first saw leafing out back in March and early April are now flowering. In some cases, you can smell them before you see them because they do have a pleasant odor. Although they smell pleasant, flowering is a sign that the plant is reproductive and will eventually produce fruit and seed. Birds will feed on the fruits, which will then carry seeds to new areas after consumption. Here's a closer look at the tubular flowers for your reference. As always, please use the resources shown here to learn more about invasive species that have been featured this week and in past episodes. As always, stay safe and continue practicing physical distancing when you're outdoors, but make sure to get outside and enjoy the outdoors when you can. Memorial Day weekend will be a good opportunity for this as we warm up over the next couple of days. Enjoy your time outside and we'll see you next time.